Nick came home with some symptoms that were, I mean, kind of some routine, basic symptoms. You wouldn't really think anything, I guess, foreshadowing catastrophic was, you know, bound to kind of come about in the next couple weeks, but it was. And um, he had some flu-like symptoms, really, and it kind of stayed there for a week or so, and I encouraged him to go to the doctor and went, and he had one test done and they called us and they said, you know, we, we really need you to go have another test done. And he kind of asked well, why. And he, they said, well, there's some spots on your liver. So we waited for the next scan and we waited for the results. And um, the doctor came into the the exam room and he his, his hands were shaking and he was holding the paper with the report in his hands. And he said, guys, I'm really sorry to say this, but what we found was metastatic cancer. At the time, he was 33, and so we were we were shaken by that. I'm pregnant, still on bed rest, and not supposed to be up moving at all throughout the day, and I'm in an exam room, and my husband just, you know, was told we have metastatic cancer, and that's what we're dealing with, and so where do we go from there? And so kind of from then, it's been a constant battle of trying to stay ahead of the game and figure out how do we how do we deal with this plus you know the symptoms and we have a seven and a six year old and then a six month now a seven month old little girl tomorrow and we haven't lost hope we're not we're not faithless by any means we're realistic in the sense that you know we have to prepare ourselves and prepare our kids for the fact that you know is it fair not really but this isn't our home and, and unfortunately daddy may be called to his eternal home sooner than we want, way sooner than we want. Through this cancer journey, I would say some of the good that has came out of it is I can count four people that have messaged me and one told me he's never, you know, he can't remember the last time he's prayed, but he's prayed for me. Another friend of mine messaged me and said he's gone to church every Sunday. If I can bring people to, to God, you know, that's what Mike has preached to Eastview, you know, is our goal is to get more people into the kingdom of heaven. And if that can help, uh, I'm all for it. I've also done some really good networking with uh, some of professional firemen from all over the United States that have cancer, have beat it, stories of ones who haven't. Um, it's just, it, there really is good with bad. You know, people come to us and say, I feel silly even talking to you about my struggle or I feel silly even saying this because you guys are going through so much. God puts struggles in our lives and every struggle is different. And yes, we've been through our fair share of struggles from marriage to death to infertility to now cancer to now facing, you know, an, an untimely death at a very young age. But everyone's struggle is there for a reason. And I think if you, if you recognize that struggle, find God, seek him out, seek the relationship, and you'll be surprised at what can come out of it. To people who say that it's foolish to believe in God, I would respond with, it's, it's foolish not to. I, I've had people ask me how I stay so strong or how how I deal with this and there, there's only one way that I can deal with this it's it's the strength of Jesus people may think it's foolish to believe but there is no no better explanation as to the peace that we have the strength that we find and the people that surround us beside God being in this in the center of it all